here we have a toddler's building block and as you can see it has four studs on it which means we could take these single studs and add one two three or four on top or if we use one of these two bricks we have two left over so far so obvious but there is an interesting analogy here to how atoms bond together to make molecules uh, so let's lay down some rules for this our aim is to build a wall it needs to be two blocks high with no gaps around the edges and the sides need to be straight no uncovered studs on one side or overhanging bricks on the top so if i stick two of these blue bricks together there are six remaining slots and these can be filled with six white studs and this is a representation of a very simple molecule ethane each blue block has four slots just like the carbon atom which can bond to four other atoms and the single studs are like hydrogen which can only bond to one other atom and easily fill up the spare slots that are left over if we overlap the blue blocks by two studs then we only have four slots left over for the white studs just like with ethene there's a double bond between the two carbon atoms that take up two of carbon's other slots we can get a little further with this because we can build methane, acetone, ethanol, acetic acid, or methyl ethanoate. This pink three block could represent nitrogen, so we could build ammonia, acetonitrile, glycine, and even more. If you put the blocks together somewhat randomly, providing you have obey all those rules you have two layers of bricks and square sides you'll have a molecular structure if you have any gaps you'll know you need to put something there like a hydrogen atom or something else that's appropriate that's fair enough but not really anything particularly special any system where you limit the number of connections between building blocks and then lay down a couple of rules will reproduce molecular structures we have molecular modeling kits designed to do the exact same thing and even simple card games have been built to do just this the posh term for this would be that there is an isomorphism between these bricks and molecular modeling kits and roughly with sub microscopic molecules the limits on connectivity remain to a rough approximation unchanged the interesting connection to chemistry with these bricks, however, is that it resembles a way of representing molecular structures invented and published by August Kekulé back in the 1860s. Kekulé is mostly famous for working out the structure of benzene in 1865. His story, if you believe what he said about it years later, goes that he was daydreaming and imagined a snake eating its own tail, or the Ouroboros symbol and then he decided that benzene must have a ring-like structure because that's the only structure that satisfies everything we know about it and it, it does it's quite an insight made all the more amazing by what we had to go on at the time so a brief bit of history what was chemistry like back in 1865 well no periodic table mendeleev's modern version was another four years away we were fairly sure there were atoms, at least philosophically, but the structure we know about today would be at least 50 years away, and certainly no fancy instruments like magnetic resonance or mass spectrometry, or even infrared spectroscopy, and definitely no X-ray crystallography. Most chemistry was very wet, and with minimal health and safety procedures backing it up. To prove anything, chemists of the day would have to react materials together and carefully check the amounts used or any changes in weight or volume to try and figure out how much of each element had reacted in which proportion. Once you had that information and all those proportions, you just had to, well, guess at what the molecular structure must have been. That's the world that Kekulé was in, and before he came up with the structure of benzene that made him famous, he came up with a way of representing the proportions or equivalences between elements when they reacted. He would represent hydrogen as a single circle, 
and then molecules that were equivalent to two hydrogens as two overlapping circles, then three, and then the carbon atom, which would be represented by four overlapping circles. These would then be drawn as long elongated sausages. Actually, according to Oswald Walker, writing in J. Kemed back in the 1970s, they were originally called roll formulas, as in bread rolls, and the German for bead or bulge was accidentally misread as versed and translated into English as sausage. These formulas are a pretty elegant way of representing the proportions that elements must exist in in order to form stable organic molecules, exactly like this brick method here. You can't really go wrong. You have to fill up every slot or it won't be right. It's really easy to see if you've gone wrong. But Kekulé's method didn't take off. It was never popular. He kept at it, though, only using the structural representations we recognise today a handful of times in his whole career. But what did stick around was his terminology. Elements react in certain equivalents, and Kekulé was a key popularizer of the term we know today as valence, or valency. Carbon has an equivalence to four hydrogen atoms. It has a valence of four. So why was Kekulé's sausage formula unpopular? Well, in addition to being a complete pain to write out and giving us no real indication of the actual geometric structure of a molecule and only the idea of a rough connectivity between the atoms, these have a few structural limitations. We can do ammonia just fine. We can then substitute one hydrogen for carbon to make a primary amine or substitute another for a secondary amine and then we're a little stuck if we want a tertiary amine. Do we stick it sideways? Can we cram an extra carbon in there in some other way? Either way it's ugly and a little ambiguous when it comes to whether the valence has been satisfied. But we can with building blocks because we have another dimension to branch off into. In fact, as far as I can tell, this handles branching structures really well. This extra dimension really helps here. Whereas on a page, it gets very crowded very quickly. So ultimately, the sausage formula just is not that good at what it really needs to do. If you want to teach valency, great. The usual way of representing chemical structures doesn't build that in. You need to learn valency first and then read that into the structures. If you get it wrong, it's not immediately obvious unless you've gone through first year undergraduate chemistry already. But this method, whether with sausages or building blocks or bulging rolls, forces you to engage with valency without knowing about it in advance. There's a strong connection or isomorphism when it comes to connectivity, but not to arrangement in space. Whereas the conventional method of drawing lines and connecting letters and dots maps onto actual structure, in most cases at least, and using wedges and dashes, we can expand on it to show a bit of 3D information or spatial awareness. But this is not really remotely possible in Kekulé's sausage formula. Both methods of drawing molecules struggle to properly convey benzene, however. Even Kekulé had no choice but to abandon his own method in favour of the molecule drawing conventions that were developing at the time. But benzene isn't this hexagon of alternating single and double bonds. Each bond is supposed to be identical. So Kekulé later in the 1870s proposed that they alternate rapidly because there's nothing particularly special about this configuration. You can swap them around, no problem. Modern organic chemistry keeps that with a concept called resonance, which became more formalized a few decades after Kekulé's benzene structure was proposed. Ultimately, resonance throws its hands up and just straight up admits that our representations are flawed. They're an approximation and the rigidity proposed by Kekulé sausage structures and even by our modern chemical shorthand doesn't really exist. So resonance allows us to move bonds around, be a little more flexible with what valence means, and make multiple representations of the same molecule that remain completely valid within the rules. 
even though we know that this isn't literally true when it comes to the actual molecules themselves, but it's still a model that can make useful predictions about chemical reactivity. So that's really the point here. What method is best for the job? What makes the best predictions? If we just want to know about valences and how many equivalences of atoms will react, then the sausage formula can help us. But if we want to know about structures and get a feel for what the molecules actually look like, well, I, I think Kekulé's awkward attempt at drawing benzene with it quite clearly says we should stick with the usual method. <laughs>